everybody, and welcome to How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy. In today's episode, we have a really special dessert for you that is well loved by everybody I've ever made it for. In fact, there's one person who I made it for just once over four years ago. And to this day, she still has fond memories of it and tells me about that dish that she had, which is she had it again. What is so great that people want more and more of it? Come on, everybody. Let's get cooking. Today, we're going to make a wonderful three-layer jello salad with a red, a white, and a blue layer. Seeing as those are the American colors, we often will make it for Memorial Day and or Fourth of July. Today, though, is the day before Mother's Day, so I'm making it ahead of time so we can have it on Mother's Day because it's my mom's favorite recipe. She found it in a cookbook that she bought from the teachers at a high school who put together a whole bunch of recipes that people have at home. Now, we've tried this recipe many times, many different combinations. There's one tricky layer that we're going to get to and tell you how to do it right. But the main thing is you want to make sure to use the ingredients as listed in this case. There might be some small substitutions, but we have never found a better substitute for any layer than what we're going to use today. So I recommend if you try this jello, you make sure you use what we use to make it taste right. Here are the ingredients. Two three ounce boxes of raspberry jello. Now, I haven't found three ounce boxes of raspberry jello in the store recently, so we usually get a six ounce box and cut it in half. Remember, today I'm doing the recipe, so I'm gonna use two of these. Half a pint of half and half. One half pint of sour cream. One half cup of sugar. One package of unflavored gelatin. One teaspoon of vanilla. One cup of water. And a second cup of water. One package of frozen blueberries. We've decided that we like the fresh ones better, so I bought some fresh ones instead. One package of frozen blueberries. We've decided we like fresh ones better, so I bought fresh ones instead. First thing I'm going to do is heat up the one cup of water. Now remember, I'm going to double this recipe, so I'm going to do twice as much as you would make for your own recipe. So everything I'm doing is double, but you're going to take your one cup of water and heat it up. Then we're going to add, I like to add it in now, go ahead and add in the jello flavor now. I have actually done this recipe many times and in many different ways. One time I thought, well, you know, we should make the red layer the top layer. Because this is supposed to be red, white, and blue, so red should go on top. Well, I tried that way and it just didn't work. When I put the blueberries on the top layer, it just didn't work as well as when they're on the bottom layer. So I always make sure to put the red layer on first. So I'm going to go ahead and pour in the gelatin right now. The jello mixture, that one is the, what was that? That is the raspberry jello mixture. Now we've tried cherry, tried other mixtures that were red, strawberry. None of them taste as good as the raspberry, and I don't know why. And we always do the one with the sugar. Make sure that's your So now we're going to heat it up and let it get to a boil. Then we're going to add in the blueberries so that we can make our red layer at the bottom. So we'll see how that works. Okay, there we go. The jello's too nice. Uh oh. Don't let it do that. Okay, I had to turn the heat down as the fire was causing it to boil over. We don't want that. So it's at a nice boil now. So now we're going to add in the frozen blueberries. I remember I decided to use fresh and say we like fresh better. Frozen works really well because it chills the layer faster. But we're going to use, go ahead and use fresh. We're going to use fresh blueberries instead. We're using fresh blueberries in here to get it all nice and coated. There we go. So that's it. You boil it, put in the blueberries, mix it up. And you often put it into the nice 13 by 9 casserole dish, which we often use for baking. We're going to use it for chilling today. Okay, so we're already taking on half of the blueberry mix and already poured it into one of the casserole dishes. Now I'm going to take the one that I have left, this is about one serving size, about what you would see. I'm going to pour it straight into the serving casserole dish. So you see there, we have created a red It looks very red from all the blueberry. And if I haven't seen blueberries all this time, it was strawberries. So we have lots of strawberries in here. It makes it really good. See lots of fruit. Really makes it well. It's pretty, you know, you get all the fruit and the right on top, the layer of jello. Now we're going to put it into the refrigerator, make sure it is absolutely flat. Otherwise, you're going to have a leaning jello when you are done. So if you need to, you might use paper towels, a plate, something to even it up. I'm going to use some paper towels and even it up to make sure it's as flat as I can get in the refrigerator. 
As I look at my raspberry dish, you can see me looking at it. I can see the back side is a little bit lower than the front side. Actually, near refrigerators are designed that way so that when you spill, it doesn't spill over the front. So I'm going to have to support it up about to that level. So I put on some paper towels, you look at it, it looks like it's pretty flat, pretty even. This side is as high as the back side, so now it's flat. That's what you want to do to make sure your gel is flat when you chill it. So we're going to chill this layer for about an hour. Then we're going to heat up the next layer. Then we're going to let that layer cool enough so that when I drop it on top of this layer, it doesn't melt the bottom layer. That has happened to us many times. And you get a red and white mixture. Here you can see the red layer is all ready to go. Take a look. It's all nice and gelled. Tilt it, no movement, nice and shiny. Look at the side. Nice and even. That's those paper towels you're in, making sure it's nice and even so that it's going to be nice and flat. We put on the white layer. Now we're going to cook the white layer. We want to make sure the white layer is nice and cooked, ready to go, and then cool down before we add it. If you add the white layer when it's hot, it's going to melt this layer. And you're going to have a red and white mess. It's happened to me many times before. So you've got to make sure to let that layer cool down before you pour it on. Okay. Here is that critical layer. If you get this layer right, the jello is wonderful. If you get it wrong, it's still great, just not quite as good. If you do the wrong steps in here, this is where the jello, the white layer might get a little chalky or gritty. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I've done to make it as least amount of chalk, gritty, chalky and gritty as I can. So we're, so we're gonna put in a half a pint of half and half. Remember, I'm doubling my recipe, so that's a whole pint right there. And to that, we're gonna add half a cup of sugar. Remember, I've doubled the recipe, so this is a cup of sugar. We're gonna stir that all together. This layer is a wonderful, beautifully tasting layer. It's not so good by itself, but it complements the top layer and bottom layer, the red and white layer, so well, it tastes wonderful. So once we've got that in there, we are going to stir it all together. I'm heating up quickly, heating up quickly is fine. I'm going to stir this around. Yeah, I'm not using the spoon that I would usually use for this. I'm gonna stir it up to mix in the milk, the cream it is, half and half, with the sugar. I can hear the graining, the grittiness of the sugar. So we're gonna heat this up until it gets to that boil. And when it boils, it's gonna do something special. It's gonna to start to boil up and boil over. At that instant, absolutely turn off 100%, 100% ready, turn off the minute it starts boiling up. If you go far on that, that's when the gritty chalkiness starts. So turn it off 100% right after you see the boiling. Then we're gonna add the sour cream and the vanilla. And that will be our wonderfully tasting creamy middle layer that really adds the special zest to this dish. While this is heating up, you wanna get that one teaspoon of vanilla extract ready as well as your half pound of sour cream and the gelatin. Do not forget the gelatin. For the gelatin, we're gonna take one package of unflavored gelatin. So we're gonna take two tablespoons of cold water, add it to the gelatin, but we're gonna do that right before we turn off the heat. While this is still heating up, let me show you what the unflavored gelatin looks like. I'm gonna use a colored bowl so you can see the nice white powder inside. We're gonna take that, we're gonna add two tablespoons of water to one package of unflavored gelatin. It's to get it a little dissolved so that when we put it in, it'll dissolve easier into the mixture. Let's get this hot first though. As you see the little bubbles forming, you know the mixture's warm. It's good enough for the gelatin to be put in, so I'm going to stir up my gelatin and get ready to put in. Gelatin right here. Two tablespoons of water. Ooh, that bubble. Stir it around. It's going to get very little gelatinous. That's why it's called jello. A nice thick, mm, a nice thick mixture. There we go. You can see it's thickening up. Nothing new with heat, just because it's gelatin and water itself. We want to activate that gel, so that's why we're heating up the other layer. If I didn't heat it up, it wouldn't activate the gel. That's nice. Ooh, that's hot.
Trying to get as much gel stain as I can. I want it to firm up this middle layer. So add more gelatin. There we go. Wonderful. Now we're going to stir that up. So the gelatin will dissolve in the hot mixture. That's what you want it to do. Okay, we're gonna wait for the bubble up. Oh, here it comes. Let's take a look. So I was waiting for it to bubble up. Can I get to see if it's supposed to bubble? Oh, there it is. Gotta turn it off right now. Get rid of that bubble up. That's how you know you got it hot enough. It feels very smooth and creamy as I stir it. Now we gotta add two more items. Oh, it smells wonderful like hot ice cream. Now I've got to add the vanilla extract. One teaspoon will do. If you do more than one teaspoon, as my daughter did one time, accidentally spill a whole bunch in there, it'll still be very good. I hope I have enough. Oops, it's a little more than one. Let's do a little less than one. There we go, some vanilla. That's some added lovely flavor. It's like vanilla ice cream in here. Got a vanilla extract. Magnifique. Now to add our half a pint of sour cream. Remember, I've done it again. And this is why you're about to see two half pints or a pint of sour cream. One trick about the sour cream is going to help cool it down because it was in the refrigerator earlier, so it's cool. So to help start the cooling process, remember you need to get this mixture pretty cool because if you do not cool it down cool enough, when it mixes with the red layer, it's going to melt it. Do not mix it when it's too hot. All that sour cream in there, a whole half pint in this case. You're going to see the sour cream melt. And it's going to add a wonderful flavor, texture. It's going to make this taste very good. That middle layer is the secret to this jello. Going to stir it up, break up all that sour cream, make it look smooth and blended. And the vanilla as well, smooth and blended. If you want to use a whisk, you could use a whisk. I am not going to use one today. So make it nice and smooth. We have tried many methods to make sure it doesn't get chalky afterwards. We have used a whisk. We have used a blender. Trust me, I used a blender once. We have tried all sorts of tactics. The only one I can see that works well is you get it to that hot point and pour on the other stuff. That seems to be the key. To that hot point and get everything else in there. So no matter how much I blended with the blender, I mix with the mixer. Or I whisked it with a whisk. No matter how often I did these things, those did not matter in terms of the creaminess of this layer. So we're working on making sure it's creamy, so we've melted everything, we've gotten the high point. Once it boiled up, we turned it off immediately to make sure it didn't get too much hot. Turn off the boil. You know, that could be the secret. Maybe I'll do it on a lower temperature next time, not too hot. But you gotta have it hot enough to activate that jello when it cools. Alright, let's see. Any lumps? Any lumps? Checking for lumps. A few lumps still, that's okay. Stir a little more. This mixture's still hot, but right now I bet I could put my finger in it, it wouldn't be too hot. One way I test how hot the mixture is after it's been sitting out a while, so we can put it onto the red layer, is I touch the sides. Yeah, it's still really hot right now. So I can touch the sides, it's still a little warm. It is definitely too hot to pour on the layer. 
If I can put my hand on the side and not feel too hot, it's time to pour. So now we're just gonna let it sit. I'm looking at my creaminess. Is this good and creamy? Let's check again, creamy. A few little lumps, those will be okay. Don't worry about the little bit of lumps. We've stirred up well, it is nice and creamy. Those little lumps that you see in there are not gonna change anything. And it is good to sit until it's ready. Usually what I do is I start cooking this layer about one hour after I put the other in the refrigerator so that the refrigerated one will be starting to gel and hopefully be fully gelled by the time this one is done and cool enough to pour on. That's usually the timing of it. But it might take a little longer. Just keep checking on your layer and your refrigerator. See how long it takes to get to that nice gelness that you like. It's been about an hour and a half since the cream layer has been taken off the stove. And it feels pretty cool to touch on the outside. If I can hold the edges of the pot, we're good. Now I am going to test to make sure it's good. I'm going to take a ladle, a spoon of it. I think it's cold enough and we're going to pour it on. If you don't see any pink, if you don't see the red bleeding, looks like it's pretty good. So I'm going to keep using my ladle, pour more on. You can pour directly on too, that's fine. I'm just being extra careful with my cream layer because it is the best layer of uh, this three layer jello. Everyone usually agrees this is the one layer that they love to have on their three layer jello. So I'm going to pour it all in, pour it all over. Ah, uh, looks good. All right, let's add some more, some more. Some more till we've poured it all on. Let's see, I can see a little bit of pink on the top now. Got a little pink in there, but that's okay. All right, so let me show you what it looks like from the side. There we go, my camera finally focused on the sides. You can kind of see the split layer. The red layer is a little bit in the white layer, but that is a beautiful looking white layer, a nice size too. It's gonna taste very good once you get that blue layer on top. Now again, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator, let it sit for another hour or so, and we're gonna start the blue layer. Okay, hey, remember we already put a spot to make it level in the refrigerator. I'm gonna put it on that same spot. Both will be the same level. Same level all the way through. And double check to come ahead and look at it. Looks like a nice level layer. Okay, an hour has passed by the refrigerator. And the white layer, as you can see, is all gelled and solid. Thanks to that gelatin. Oh, I can't wait to taste this tomorrow. So once we got this layer all gel and solid, now we're actually gonna start the blue layer, the final top layer with blueberries. That's what's gonna make it blue, it's the blueberries. It's not the jello. So we don't use any other flavor with raspberry because that is the best flavor as we found out through all our trials. Honestly, I probably could have started the blue layer about a half hour ago so it could have cooled down long enough so be ready for the topping, but oh well. It is what it is, and we're gonna start it now. And it'll be done, about 10, 15 minutes to cook, and probably wait another hour to let it cool. Ah, and if you use the frozen blueberries, your wait time will be less because the coldness of the frozen blueberries will cool down that hot mixture we're about to make. So let's make the third layer. Now I may have said this before, but when I only do one recipe, I'll buy a six ounce box of Jello six ounces right here because I can't find the three ounces anymore so I'll buy the six and I'll pour it out half at a time half for the top layer half for the bottom layer but since I'm done with the recipe I'm gonna use all six and two cups of water so let's start the heating process let's heat up the water go ahead and open your package of jello dump it right in You may also know when you're looking at jello boxes and how much water you're supposed to add, you may have noticed that we're only adding half as much water as they're expecting you to use. That's because when we add the blueberries, it'll add a little bit of water as well. Now the original recipe actually asked for canned blueberries. I've had a lot more trouble trying to find canned blueberries in the store. So I've had to either resort to frozen, where there's a little extra liquid with it, 
or I've had to go to the fresh ones that we're using today. Now what they asked you the canned blueberries was to dump that wonderful purplish liquid into the red raspberry jello right here. And when you do that, it magically turns blue. Instead, we're gonna let the blueberries turn it blue. We'll see how close it gets to a nice blue color. Frozen blueberries will make it more blue. But I have found that just adding the blueberries themselves will make it turn a little blue. So we're gonna let this heat up to full heat. Let it boil, then we're gonna add blueberries. So while this is boiling, I'm gonna wash some blueberries. All right, you can see the bubbles rising, getting ready to boil over, so we're gonna turn it off and add the blueberries. So we're gonna take this off the fire completely, let it cool down till it's cool to the touch. Then we're gonna add it to the top layer of our jello. And we'll let it cool overnight, and we'll have a beautiful dessert waiting for us tomorrow. All right, it's been close to an hour now that we have been cooling this jello, the third layer. If I touch the sides, it feels a little more than room temperature, but that should be fine. Just a little more than room temperature, and that should be good. So we're going to pull out the jello and pour it right on. We'll start slow. And if that doesn't work, we'll let it cool a little more. You can see there's a little dot there. As I was putting the layer of jello on the other mold, you can see that I dropped a strop there. So let's just show you how I check it. So I'm going to take some of the jello itself, pour it on. Look, that stands nicely, doesn't melt the white layer. That's exactly what you want. So let's go ahead and dump in the blueberries. You can add more or less blueberries than I have here. I'm gonna have a nice layer of blueberries all around. Full dump in. Maybe still a few from the other one. So there we go. And if you wanna add more blueberries, you can. There's still room for more blueberries in there. You can see the jello actually is red. Because I'm not using canned blueberries anymore, it doesn't really hit that reddish layer, but if you have a ton of blueberries, you've got a lot of blueberries, it's going to make it nice and blue. So there it is. There is the top layer of the red, white, and blue jello. We're going to now stick this in the refrigerator. I'll show you the other one. It has more blueberries on it. So here's the second one. I didn't show this one to you before because this one's in a non-see-through dish, so you can't see the sides. So let me show you the side of the see-through one so you can see how it looks. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So as you're looking at the jelly, you can see there are three layers. The white layer looks a little taller than it really is because, well, it has a little film above. Yeah, the third layer is really good. So now we're going to put it back in the refrigerator, freeze it up, and we'll have it tomorrow. There's also one other fact I learned about this jello. If you leave it out in the open air where it's warm, it will melt. So make sure you keep it cold, have it cold, serve it cold, and eat it cold. It tastes very good. We'll try it tomorrow. See if the kids think. See if I did good on that middle layer. So here's the finished product of the three layer jello. If I move it around, you can see it's nice and firm. Let's take a look at the sides. You can see the three layers in action. The bottom layer is a nice red layer, the middle layer is the white layer, and the top layer is the blue layer. Now if you'd added some frozen blueberries instead, or you did blueberry juice in there, it would actually look blue, but we didn't. The flavor is still very good. And later, we'll give it a taste. Okay. Now. A savvy savory flavor from the top and the bottom seems to really make the middle layer as a sweet shine a lot. The only time the middle layer is not grainy is when grandma makes it. <laughs> 
but it's still sweeter. Since you made it this far, go ahead and triple up on that like button just like we tripled up on our gelatin salad. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of all my new videos that come out on Mondays. And just to mess with people who don't watch this part of the video, sneak the word pineapple in your comment below and you'll have a chance to get a shout out in my next video. Thanks for watching and have a happy and healthy day.